you are listening to Words with a Mad Coach. I am Mad Coach. I am Mad Coach. I am. I am Mad Coach. I am Mad Coach. I am. You are listening to Words with a Mad Coach. Mad World, it's me, Coach Sess. Hey, I want to talk about a fight from UFC Vegas 8 from last night. It was the fight between Impa Kasen Ganai and Maki Patolo. More specifically, I want to talk about the style that Impa was using to control that fight and what led up to his victory. The thing that stands out is when you look at the record of the two fighters, um, Maki had about three times the experience that uh, Impa had as far as a being a professional. And that would, you know, give a lot of people, you know, some reservations in terms of how well Impa would do in a fight in the UFC at that level, you know, taking on a guy with that much experience, a guy who had more UFC fights altogether um, and had been in other organizations like, like Bellator. So, what made the difference in this fight for Impa? And one of the things that, you know, the primary thing is his style. So Impa didn't have your traditional, I'm a wrestler, jujitsu guy, or Thai boxing style. He actually had an MMA style that was surrounded around a boxing structure. And that doesn't mean that he didn't clinch well or uh, kick well or doesn't understand takedowns and jujitsu. It just means that this is his hub. His hub is built around um, a boxing, uh, more like a power punching boxing style. And when you look at it, you know, what, what some of the things he did well that I thought was very intelligent was using footwork to move in and out because that type of in and out footwork, your opponent has to adjust to it. So if they're, spending more time adjusting to your footwork, they're not kicking. His head movement was beautiful in not just slipping punches to avoid getting hit. Um, if you look at the subtlety, he, he had a su subtle sway to the way he moved, which is designed, which is, in my opinion, how slipping is supposed to work. You're not trying to avoid punches or duck them. You're trying to make your opponent miss. And that's what he did very well. And you saw that in their faces by who had the damage and who did not. Um, he had a subtle pressing style, a slow stalking style where he was kind of walking Maki down, but he wasn't forcing it. It was very natural, very relaxed and very smooth in terms of the movement where he would just kind of close the distance and explode only when he needed to. There was no rush. And a lot of times when you see guys who have boxing um, as a primary and then maybe some jujitsu on the backside or maybe some good kicks or whatever um, they tend to rush they tend to get in trouble um, that's because in my opinion th they haven't perfected that true MMA boxing style another thing that he did well was he threw in combos MMA has a bad rep when it comes to guys who respect one another too much where they just sit back and throw onesies at one another and hope for the best. You didn't see that from Impa. I thought he did a good job of throwing combos and getting off first and controlling the situation with power. Now, he doesn't have a lot of finishes on his record as a pro, but that does not mean that he doesn't have the power. I think what he's doing is learning on the job uh, from my personal opinion. There are only so many styles that one can bring to an MMA fight. And I think that it would be wise that you learn these styles. I don't think you can learn these styles in the gym because every gym tends to cater to one or two of them. And th let's say that there are about 12, 10 to 12 styles that I personally have found to be consistent. And I think you have to learn them. Some of these you have to learn in the fight. Some of these you will learn in the fight because no one can give you these looks in the gym because your gym will naturally fall into a, a natural rhythm where it caters to certain things 
And that's just facts. So I think Impa is learning on the job, doesn't mind learning on the job, very patient, um, and has the style to pick up on these little nuances. And I thought he was just so aware of little minute things. One of the things he did so well was um, after he would slip a combo or a power punching series or an engagement or whatever, that he would go in for the clinch. And if you think about being a traditional boxer, a good boxer would slip, slip, slip and try to fire back. Because Impa was going into the clinch, that's what told me this guy truly understands MMA. He would slip, 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 go into the clinch, lock the guy up, not let him, uh, let his opponent get him into a firefight and not allow um, his opponent to get off with something reckless. He would shut him down. And then in the clinch, one of the things that he did very well was he didn't really attack off the clinch. He landed some excellent shots when exiting the clinch. I thought that was very good. Thought his conditioning was outstanding. You saw between one of the rounds where he, the, the guy looked like he was on the beach and he was just talking to his corner people. He was just so relaxed. And I thought he had an excellent corner team. There was a lot of things they were um, screaming out in between the uh, uh, not just between rounds, but during the fight that you could hear uh, about his footwork, about his placement, about getting off first, just little things that they were saying. Excellent material going on with uh, Team Jimbo. I thought that the overall reason that he won the fight is because of forward, uh, forward movement, the damage that he did, and a reasonable amount of output. And the reason I say reasonable amount is because he pretty much matched Maki's output. He didn't he didn't overdo it. You know, I think that um, with his level of conditioning and relaxation inside that cage, he could probably push it another uh, 10 to 15 percent up. But this is early on his, in his career, so there's no need for that. Um, no need to rush it right now. He did just fine. So I thought that, you know, he matched Maki's output or Maki matched his output. However you want to look at it. They didn't really outstrike one another. When you really look at the um, the numbers, you know, not by a lot, you know, the, the numbers were close. But I think what made the difference was that he did the damage and he moved forward and he had just enough output to um, take away emotional feelings. The judges might have been having for his uh, his opponent. He took he took them away. And some of the critiques I heard was, you know, him going to the body. If you've ever seen uh, Jeff Jimmo warming his guys up you know they do body shots um i will say that uh, there was one thing i read online about um he should develop some leg kicks I, I don't think that's an issue because you saw when he threw the high kick it was a beautiful high kick he just didn't land it but if he can throw a beautiful high kick like that then it won't take much for him to learn how to throw powerful leg kicks like that and i haven't seen every fight that Empress fought in so he may just didn't throw it in this fight um and I, and I think that um, just from my personal uh, perspective, because I like to clinch, mix it up, turn it into offense, um, especially if you're not going to be a classic wrestler that dives in. I think guys who clinch well do a good job of uh, supplementing the clinch for a takedown game. You know, if I have to look at those three critiques of body shots, leg kicks and clinching compared to, you know, excellent boxing structure, footwork, head movement, stalking counter punches combos getting off first controlling uh his opponent with power his conditioning relaxation his awareness uh, his fight iq of just learning on the job and just having an excellent corner you know you can you can take those critiques and just you know th throw them out of the window for right now because he did so many other things that were awesome and excellent for um the level of experience especially that's the thing that catches you off guard is like He's, he's basically in there with a guy with roughly um, two and a half to three times more experience. And and that can be dangerous at the UFC level, you know, when you're just thrown in there with a guy with so much more experience. And I think you're seeing that more and more. The level has just jumped. I think there's just a lot of new guys out there, a lot of new names, a lot of new faces. And I think if you go to uh, Dana White's Contender Series, I think you're, that's where you should be watching right now because that's where the new faces are coming from. That's where this new output is coming from. That's where the new skills are coming from. I wouldn't be surprised if Dana figures out how to use the, the Dana White uh, series to become the new ultimate fighter. 
a lot of good talent out there. Congratulations to Impa Kassin Ganai. And um, I expect to see good things coming from him. But uh, Mikey wasn't bad. It's just that that power, you know, that, that Impa has, you know, um, he wasn't just trying to throw and burn himself out. He had that power sustained for three rounds. And regardless of what happens, I think this is just a guy that's going to be in the UFC for quite a while. I am Coach Sess, and you've had words with the Mad Coach.